I just like the sound of it. 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 Go. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Cold Front Report Live Special Edition. I am joined tonight by my compadre, Fred Kilmartin, and the ever so lovely Bill's Mafia sweetheart, Mrs. Shelby Waddle. How are you tonight? Sorry, you cut out. <laughs> Couldn't hear you. I said we are here live with Bill's Mafia sweetheart, Wait, Shelby Waddle. How are you get tonight? Fancy. Oh, I'm great. How are you? Doing fine. Doing fine. Freddie, how are you doing tonight, Freddie? I'm doing great. Uh, you know, we had a mandatory mini camp today, so still checking out, see what's going on with that. Looking for some stories. Uh, we have the great Mrs. Uh, Waddle on tonight. It's an honor to meet you. Nice to meet you, my friend. <laughs> Pleasure to be here. All right. So a little bit about Miss Waddle, if you do not know, okay. 
The last position she held, she was a sales manager for live booking entertainment. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, I essentially got paid to throw parties for a living. Um, it was a good time. I did it for about six years. Um, I originally was brought on to be a assistant for my boss and ended up not being an assistant and essentially became their sales booking person. Um, it was a good time. And I learned very quickly that I did not want to be a wedding planner because I don't really like to hear people bitching all day long. So that quickly turned into me just arranging the party and going from there. That sounds like the easy route to go. That sounds like something I would do. I agree with you on the, uh, on the no arguing thing. Now, when oh, you yeah. got to, now, when you got to Buffalo, um, you were greeted at the airport. The mafia met you, as they do everybody. They met you with some wings and everything. Let me ask you a question. What did you know about Buffalo before, before LA signed here? What did you honestly know about Buffalo, New York? Oh, a damn thing, to be real. Um, when we signed and we agreed to go to Buffalo, actually in Mexico, um, and it, I'd be honest if I said I, or I wouldn't be being honest if I said that I was excited. Because, I mean, just as pretty much everybody knows or, you know, doesn't know, they don't know what Buffalo is about. They don't know what the people are about. Mm -hmm. They don't really know a damn thing. And neither did I. Um, we essentially chose to go to the Bills. Um, and now looking back, it was the best decision we could have made. Um, and we are more than ecstatic to be a part of the Bills family. So it turned out pretty good, I'd say. Yeah, we I like it. Out of the deal. Yeah. <laughs> so what was your first impression of the, the city itself? Well, I've actually only been there uh, one weekend. We've never been there together. Mm -hmm. um, and the one weekend that I was there, it was um, after I had run and started a charity campaign um and so i was actually at, um and i actually did them at the facility so i had actually met a number of the staff um members before they even met my husband and so they said you know this is the first time we've ever met a wife before we met the player um and so yeah it was pretty cool um but the short amount of time that I was there, I immediately knew these are my kind of people and this is my kind of city. So um, it it was amazing, long story short. Yeah. So you get here and, the, and one of the first things you do, you find it in your heart. And we talked about this before uh, off air. Mm -hmm. um, you went and you saw Poncho. Uh -huh. okay. You went and you saw Poncho. Tell the people what you told me about that experience because I absolutely agree with the way you summed it up and how it made you feel. Um, so LA and I have actually spoke about Poncho, you know. Sorry about that. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Someone calling. Um, yeah, so we have spoke with him a number of times both before we lost him and since then, and actually this past weekend, um, we were kind of chatting about him and I have never in my life met someone who made me feel the way that he made me feel just in the one hour that I was blessed to meet him. Um, and essentially, <clears throat> the best I could explain that was that it was like an angel. I mean, the guy, honestly, he was like, he was just goodness. That he was goodness in human form. He just, anyone around him, you just know what a special person that he was right. and what an incredible person that he <clears throat> lost. And you know, I, I kind of made the post when he had passed that his legacy goes far beyond the mask. You know, he 
his legacy lives on and not only the backpacks that, you know, and the, the hundred thousand, right. his legacy and his kindness and the way that he made people feel. And not many people can do that. Um, and it's especially rare in today's day and age um, to meet someone so pure and so kind. Um, and so to get to meet him and to really understand what he was about was such a blessing. And, you know, when I went to meet him, it was not for, you know, me to say, oh, look at me, you know, look. Right. Right. Take a picture. And, I, and I actually asked him before, you know, if I could just take a picture for me. Um, just to have personally, because I really wasn't going to say anything. Um, and he said, you know, no, like, let's, let's break the internet. So that we did. Um, and then, since then, it's, it's, his legacy will live on far beyond his, his, you know, earth body. Yeah. Right. That, that's pretty much how the relationship we all had with Poncho. It wasn't just, hey, I want to take a picture with you. We all talked to him on a regular basis. And uh, the opportunities that we had, uh, when he came up to Buffalo, we made sure that we were able to go and just chat with him just to check on his well-being and, you know, see how he's feeling and everything. Because to be honestly, he's probably the biggest inspiration I've ever seen as far as Bills fans goes. And I've been a Bills fan since 85. So he truly is. a He's, he's going to be missed by, by now, the Bills. I'm getting, for sure. I'm getting every couple words here. Um, All right. All right, so you posted the picture, and that's immediately yep. when you turned into Bill's Mafia sweetheart. But it's not all sweet all the time, is it, Miss Wild? You want to talk about some of the heat you get on Twitter and the nastiest tweet you've ever received? I can't hear you. Um, let me. What? I'm going to try to put on too. All right, see if you can hear me. Keep, but, keep going. Since you posted the poncho pic, you, that's when you really became a Bills Mafia sweetheart on social media. So, but it's not always sweet. You do get some heat on social media for the person and the personality that you have. So yep. tell, talk sure a little do. bit about the heat you get on Twitter and some of the meanest tweets you've received. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I'm never one to apologize for, for me. And, you know, I, I do my best just in life to be a pretty decent person um but i am human um and i do say and do things that you know obviously i wish i could take back but that's like you can't take it back um but i think people kind of take advantage of the fact that they are saying these mean things through the internet and they kind of take advantage and kind of do the whole keyboard warrior type deal. I was just going to uh, say that keyboard warriors. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 That's pretty, yep. That, that's pretty prevalent. Um, and you know, people, people don't think before they tweet. Um, and you know, I'm, de I've definitely been there. I'm like I said, I'm sure as shit, not perfect. Um, but you know, I'm, which, one for the swear jar. Um, but, you know, I've gotten some really crappy things said to me. And, you know, people always say, you know, well, well, that's what you signed up for. And, you know, you have to learn to accept the criticism being that your husband's a football player. And I think I understand that. I get that. Um, but when I have people messaging me, essentially saying, oh, your husband's not going to make the team, you know, and yeah, I, I get these things often. That's and, and it's the, <clears throat> the thing that I need people to realize is that, you know, again, I get it. And, you know, there are people's jobs who, as a professional, mm -hmm. professional analyst, that is their job. And I understand that. But when I get little assholes who have never stepped foot on a football field and have no idea what it's like to do that, messaging me, telling me that my husband's not going to make it. Y'all have to understand that we are people, man. Like this is not a hobby for us. Yes. I understand that it's a hobby for you to sit there and speculate 
on who's going to make the 53 man roster, but that's our livelihood. That's our life. Yep. That's his job. <laughs> when you're telling me that my husband's not going to make it, that's you're, you're, you're insinuating that he's going to go without a job. And so, you know, it's like, it doesn't happen just to me. It happens to everybody. And it's like, you're going to sit there and you're going to say that not realizing that you're saying that to a human on the other side of it. And, you know, yes, football is our life. Football revolves around our life, but you know, you could be speaking with a woman, which this is not me, but you could be speaking with a woman who just married and you're telling her that, you know, her husband's going to lose her job and she has to worry about everything. <coughs> else. And, yep. you know, she has to worry about her family. And on top of that, you're saying that, you know, by the way, here's another thing to worry about. Some little asshole telling me that my husband's going to lose his job. I mean, yeah. it's like, it's wrong. And yeah, it's wrong. definitely uncalled for. And if you're they're one of those wrong. type of guys that's messaging Miss Waddle and saying that stuff in her inbox, do me a favor and shut your mouth because you never put on a set of pads before. You never clanged and banged with the big boys. So until you do that and you're successful at it, then you can offer up an opinion on whether or not Miss Waddle's husband's going to make the NFL and keep his job. Until then, kindly do me and everybody else a favor to shut your mouth. Well, it's and the about, thing is, it's, it's all not, about having respect. Absolutely. And it's, that's it's what it's not, about. Luckily, it's not their job to decide on whether or not he makes the team. And right. so. Until you sit there and you're in those meetings and you are the offensive line coach or the offensive coordinator or the head coach, enough. Like it, it's ridiculous and it gets to the point where it's like, I mean, I block people and it's still not enough. You know, I get yeah. people that are creating multiple accounts and they're, trust me, if it gets to that point and you're still doing those things to me, I'm going to do the same thing to you and I'm going to go to your job and I'm going to go to your boss. And then I'm going to go to your wife. If you're, if she's unfortunate enough to be married to you, I'm going to tell her, you know what? I don't think you like the fact that your husband is such a pussy that he sits there and he's messaging people online who he doesn't even know. And then your, your kids, Susie and Tommy, I'm going to tell them what daddy really does because it's ridiculous. Yeah. And the trolls get ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I get it. Trash talking is one thing, but. That, right, that's don't make it personal. Yeah. All right, let's talk about positive stuff, okay? Yeah. There was a GoFundMe that you wanted to talk about. You want to tell us a little bit about the GoFundMe that you have going on for the friend of yours? I would love to do that. So, actually, I've never, I've never met um, this person, but he, I actually had his friend reach out to me via Twitter uh, and say, you know what, we could really use your help on this. And once I heard his story, I was more than happy to help. And uh, I kind of want to give y'all a rundown on that. His name is Dewey. Um, he is a single father of four children who unfortunately was diagnosed with bone cancer. Um, and we, I've kind of, I've been very vocal about this before, um, you know, the VA and people, which he is a veteran. I'm not sure if I mentioned that or not, but when people come back from serving, they do, they don't get the support and you know everything that they truly deserve for putting their lives on the line. And he is one of them. Um, and so like I had mentioned, he has bone cancer and he needs to go get treatment. And instead of sending him to Roswell, which would be right by him, he is having to go to Nashville. And as a single father of four, you can imagine how difficult that is. Um, and so, what I would like to do for him is essentially raise money for him to be able to, you know, every little bit helps. And, you know, um, he is going to be joining me at the, um, when he, when he first gets back, um, he is going to join me at the preseason game against the Minnesota Vikings, which, ah, will, be, which will be at home. That's your uh, special guest. Yeah. And um, I, I, you know, I always get people saying, oh, you know, your husband's, you know, my, the one person I look up to and he's, you know, whatever as being an undrafted guy who's made it so far. I love my husband. My husband's the best thing that ever happened to me and he's incredible, but football players don't come near the heroes as veterans and we owe everything to them. <clears throat> and so um, that's in our foundation, which we're um, getting the ball rolling on that are, are two things that we will be focusing on. The vet is, project. Uh, what was that? I'm sorry. You said the vet project? 
Yeah, so uh, we are going to essentially um, give thanks and, you know, kind of let soldiers who, um, you know, signed up and put their lives on the line for us, we're going to give them the proper respect and the proper thanks that they deserve. Um, I'll be giving more details of that once I have them. Um, you know, I, of course. Is that similar them. to like the Wounded Warriors? Um, it's. It's kind of our spin on it. Um, right. LA, back when he was at Tech, um, they were big on um, working with the Wounded Warrior Project. Um, right. And I, I have a number of t-shirts of his that, um, you know, he makes fun of me because I always steal his shirts to go to bed. But, um, <laughs> you know, a lot of them have the Wounded Warrior stuff on them. Um, yeah. And I essentially would just like to, not only veterans, but essentially first responders, police officers. Uh, my dad was a cop outside of Detroit for 35 years. Um, and my uncle um, served as well. So um, I essentially want to to give thanks to them. And also the other um, side of our project will be um, helping out children who are abused and sexually abused um, as those are two groups that are near and dear to us. So um, yeah. <laughs> Is there anything in the future that we can do for you, you know to reach out? You know Absolutely. So, but we promised everybody on social media a question and answer segment with Miss Waddle, and damn it, we're going to bring it to them. Are you ready? Oh, I was born ready. Freddie, kick it off, buddy. All right, the first one that I have here is from Chef Bake One D. He wanted to know what is your snacks and your comfort food? <laughs> <laughs> I'm always comfortable, so yeah. There's not a comfort I can't get my hands on. Uh, I love. I have the worst sweet tooth. I don't have the sweet tooth. I have sweet teeth, and they're freaking all of them. So, um, <laughs> you know, I could eat sugar. I literally will eat handfuls of sugar. So, really, anything I can get my hands on. But pizza is definitely, definitely my number one. So, well, I can tell you in Buffalo, there are tons of different pizza places in the area. So you can pick or choose. I think there's probably one on every block. Good. And uh, I every piece of pizza that I've had in Buffalo, I don't think I've had a bad slice yet, to be honest with you. That's Just don't get them from the gas station. Down in Texas, that is not the case. They do not have good pizza down here. It's sad. You're, you're That's the thing about uh, upstate New York and western New York is that the food is phenomenal up here. I mean, oh, yeah. there's there's tons of it. I mean, how many restaurants have you hit up since you've been in Buffalo? Well, I had a lot of food brought to me um, at the airport. I had pizza, I had wings, I had donuts, um, just a whole bunch. Um, and so, to be honest with you, I don't even really remember. It was so long ago. And um, I had a couple bars up, but I think I was more on a liquid diet those days. So... <laughs> Uh, well, yeah. you'll have them too in Buffalo. So, oh yeah, okay. just wait till we tailgate. Just wait <laughs> oh, yeah. till we tailgate. All right, oh, yeah. the next one is the big one. The next one is what everybody's been asking. How did you and LA meet, and who made the first move? Well, that was yours truly that made the first move. I, um, see I talked to you both. <laughs> I can see that completely. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, so we actually technically uh, were introduced to each other via Twitter. Um, which uh, I don't think it surprises a lot of people since I'm pretty outspoken, but um, I slid in the DMs and, you know, it kind of went from there. And it's funny because we actually, the first thing that we ever talked about was, um, I can't remember which Super Bowl it was, but one of the last ones that Peyton, Peyton Manning played in and the big thing, their big play called that year was Omaha, Omaha. And so um, we kind of talked about that. We ended up talking. We ended up talking for a number of months. Um, and he played for the Lions at the time, which is, if y'all don't know, I'm from the suburbs of Detroit. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, we ended up talking, and he had to fly back for um, whether it was mini camp, something like that. And um, he said, "You know, do you want to pick me up from the airport?" And I said, "Sure." And so, you know, at the time I was driving Ford, Ford Fusion, which uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure if you've ever seen my husband, but yeah. I pretty much had to strap him on the hood of the car. Because I'm 6'3", I don't fit in one. 
<laughs> Ain't no way the homeboy's sitting in that car. So, but you know what? We pushed it all the way back. He, you know, pretty much laid down in the front seat as best he could. Um, and it was funny because when I first got out, the first words he truly ever said to me was, uh, where's the rest of you? And because I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm five, four and a half. Let me just make that known. Sure, <laughs> long, and a half. And, and a half. half uh, because my husband doesn't honor it, but. <laughs> that's another argument for another time um and it's funny because we both wrote our own vows for our wedding and uh i'm not sure if you can notice but i'm pretty pretty smooth um and so i said you know first words you ever said to me was where's the rest of you little did i know at the time that the rest of me was looking back at me when i looked at you uh right. that's how right. right copyright that put it on a card that's right put it on a t-shirt <laughs> oh yeah that's outstanding yeah. all right so you made the first move you slid into the dms now i know you have a very strict dm policy i have respected it so i kind of find it odd that you slid into well the shit DMs i hope started. so dude damn yeah we don't have to worry about that we're good on that so we talked about this earlier on the phone too when i told you mine that i could not share on air but what's the best pickup line that you've ever heard that actually worked on you I don't think pickup lines have ever worked on me. Um, I really don't. Well, I've all, I, I, I would never let men pay for my drinks at a bar because any woman will tell you once a man pays for your drink, he right. pretty much feels like he owns you and you have to talk to him for the rest of the night. And the only thing that I would ever say was, you know, you can't buy me a drink, but if you want to buy me some mozzarella sticks, send them on over and skedaddle because I don't yeah. really want to do all that. Uh, second, but, second part of that was what was the worst pickup line? These two questions were from Hamburger Fights Forever on Twitter. The previous wow. one about the pickup line and this one. What's the worst one you've ever heard? Well, the, I don't know if it was so much of a pickup line, uh, but I used to, I would go to class after I, you know, I would set my work schedule around my classes in college. And I would go um, lift um, in between classes and I would pretty much be there at the same time every day. And this guy knew that it was before my husband, before we started dating, but it was, you know, my ex at the time that we were together. And the dude waited outside uh, the gym locker room for an hour while I got ready and pretty much waited and gave me a laminated love letter um, that was in a binder and essentially he decorated it and you know wrote me a love letter yeah why was it laminated that's just weird that's creepy he was, he was probably <laughs> doing creepy. some gross shit with the fork he, he came out the locker room he had to go in there at some point freddie you want to take the that, next one that's yeah, who has a laminated gross. machine handy <laughs> y'all would cry if i told you some of the other ones it's it's literally it's sad it's sad I got a I got a question here from Buff Wagon eight nineteen. He wants to know if you play fantasy football or if you gamble on football. Well, I don't gamble on football, but I sure as shit gamble otherwise. And <laughs> let's just take a note at that large check back there. Yeah, that's some real some real stuff. And those other pictures of us winning at the casino. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But no, I know game on football, um, but I did play fantasy football um, one year. Um, I was in a league with, I want to say it was like 11 other guys. Um, they were the musicians um, who worked, um, kind of worked for me. Um, and I did it one season and they all talked mad shit since the first day. And they all told me, of course, that I was going to lose and uh, I actually won with Justin Tucker as my kicker, um, and you know, I beat their ass. Duh. Nah. And yeah. I, uh, I haven't played since because I go out as a winner. So, monster, who won last year? Monster. Yeah, I would have went out as a winner last year, but I got beat by some Scottish guy that wears a that wears a visor in the final. <laughs> Just pathetic. You're, you're Patrick Mahomes, you lucky. I don't even want to talk about it. But this year, they, don't worry about Freddie. Monster's coming back this year. I'm going to be there again and hoist that trophy. All right, let me see what else I got here for you. 
That, that's actually good. This one's good. Do you follow LA to any away games? And if so, what are some of your favorite stadiums and stories from those stadiums? That comes uh, to us from Patrick Gerald 70 on Twitter. Oh, hello, Patrick. Um, I do go to some of the away games, but your homegirl here is balling on a budget, and I don't like to spend money like that. And people don't realize that we don't get any free tickets. Like those two free tickets that they get, they get taken out of his check. So really? those aren't free. Um, and if we get um, tickets to away games from the team, they are literally the highest seats that you can get. So much so that the last, maybe not the last, but the Chicago game that I went to last year, um, I was so high up that I started paying people to buy my drinks and bring them back to me because I got, I got the joints of like 198 year old woman. So I had to like take a break halfway up through the steps and just started, you know, paying people to bring my drinks. Um, but my favorite, I don't know. I don't really like away games so much. Well, I like going to Detroit because I mean, I'm from there. He played there. It's, it's nice a to dome. see old friends. Huh? Yeah. Plus so, it's a dome. <laughs> yeah. And the last time I went there, I left with a, which y'all like this, I left with a, a cup full of chicken wings. Um, and so it was, it was fun. It's fun to go back and kind of see those people. But I will say, uh, my cousin and I actually went to a game in Arizona and we were, you know, just kind of walking to the stadium after getting dropped off by our Uber, not, you know, minding our own business, just walking through the parking lot and we had trash thrown at us. And it's like, you know, we're not bothering y'all, like kindly fuck off before wow. I Wow, in Arizona? Yeah. Wow. yeah, it's garbage. Wow. So you obviously you've never been to a game at uh, up in Buffalo. Mm -mm. Nope. Okay, because I can almost guarantee that Bills Mafia will not treat you like that. And if Bills Mafia is listening, Mrs. Waddle would like nice seats at the stadium. And if there's one person that can get her drinks for the remainder of the game, please hit her up. <laughs> yeah, you'll have no problems here. You'll have I no will problems. say though, as much as I'd love to have a good time, and I'll definitely come to the tailgates. I have a strict non-drunk uh, game watching policy, um, not only because I'm obviously representing my husband, but I also represent the team. Um, and so, you know, I'll partake, I'll have one or two before, but um, you know, I gotta be careful with that. And I've also watched uh, wives that do get very drunk at games. Um, and there was one specifically that her husband got hurt um, and she was an absolute shit show. I mean, just not only bawling her eyes out, but just literally acting a fool. And I refuse to be that person um, because I, and I mean, y'all saw the story about the wife who jumped over, you know, and ran on the field. That'd be me. And so, uh, <laughs> you know, and, but I will say though, it's, it's, it's a hard thing to watch when your husband gets hurt because I mean, that's, yeah, that's that's Absolutely. I mean, and, and biggest thing is that injuries are a part of the NFL. I mean, they do happen, but you yeah, don't wish, it, you don't wish any ill will against any of these players. You wish that every game they come out unscathed and they they're able yeah. to go to the next game. Because I mean, how, what is what is LA's? Uh, uh, he must have like a regimen that he does after every game. I'm sure you know because um, they're these are like full blown collisions they're having out there. I mean, yeah, so he, for a day or two. Uh, yeah, um, he is one of the most, if y'all could see the amount of things that he does on a daily basis um, to kind of make sure that his body is ready for those collisions and make sure that he's ready in every single way and to essentially minimize um, the injuries in any way that they can. Um, you know, he goes to, to chiropractors, he goes to cryotherapy, yeah. he, you know, if y'all could see our living room right now, we have, you know, those calf stretching machines. The, Acupuncture? You know, he, well, he does, the, he does that as well. He does dry needling. He does, you know, um, literally anything that you can think of to make sure that your body is on point, he does it. Um, 
you know, during that's the why I'm not, That's one reason why I'm not a fan of Thursday night football uh, games because I don't think they have enough time to heal yeah. them from Sunday till Thursday. I think that's a big toll on a lot of these football players. Yeah, that and it's that that's something that you'll that that younger players and rookies really have to realize is that um, you really have to be careful. And I, you know, as much as it sucks when a player gets injured mm-hmm. it, and the, the thing that I hate the most though, is fans that will sit there and they'll talk trash because, Oh, he's always hurt. It's like, do you think that he wants to be hurt? No, like, it's a paycheck. They're playing it's for like, a paycheck. It's like y'all sit there and you bash him for being hurt all the time. And it's like, if he's not taking care of his body properly and that's why he's getting hurt, that's one thing. But guys that, that just have bad luck, that's bad luck, man. And it sucks. But it's like they can't do anything about it. You're and pushing like, around a 350-pound ball of muscle for all game. Like, yeah, yeah like it's something's going to pop once in a while. It's just physics. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. It's like y'all don't understand the injuries that they play through. And it's like, you know, mm-hmm. I'm not going to get into specifics, but it's like, you know, there are so many things that happen that like, you know, they're little things that like it, it's you suck it up and you keep your job. And it's like you, you all don't understand if someone has a bad game and, you know, whatever, it's like y'all don't know what they're dealing with behind the scenes. Right. It's like, y'all have there's, to, next, there's a guy behind and waiting to take their job. That's why, you know, they got to play through a lot of these injuries. Absolutely. And if, if there's one thing that I wish this world could all, you know, kind of absorb is some empathy and just realize that it's like, you know, shit isn't as easy as it looks. You know, it's, you know, I, I always have people that ask me, they're like, you know, well, you know, how is it that hard? You know, you guys get an off season and he only works on Sunday. And I'm like, are yeah, you, right. are you yeah. that? Thick. Yeah, he's he really thinks he only works he on plays Sunday. one day a week, but he's got six days to get ready to play. That <laughs> no, and it's yeah. like people people think that we live in Texas and he commutes every day. Those people are not. I can't. Even you have no. Day. You have no idea how common that is. Like right. this is the stuff that I get questions of all the time. And it's and here's the thing though, I'm not bashing these people. I'm really not. Unless you're an asshole, I'm not bashing you. Because I get it. I mean, I, I didn't understand that before I was an NFL wife. I didn't get that. But that's the thing. And I know that people don't like me. You either love me or, or you hate me. And I get that because I'm very, I have a very strong personality. And I, I try to do my best in Twitter and in my social media to essentially help people understand the things that I didn't understand. Because it's like, you know, people don't, they don't like to hear the truth. They don't like to hear that this isn't as easy as they think it is. They like to live in the fantasy world that they could beat them at a four or four or whatever the hell it's called. I don't know. I'm not good at that. My husband didn't get an invite to the combine, so I wouldn't know. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, here's the thing. It's like, this shit isn't easy. And it's like, just have some empathy, man. Like, right. stop, These are stop people. Yes. And it's like, they mm-hmm. have families, you know, they have daughters, they have sons. And it's like, you know, give them a break sometimes you know enough with the the shit talking and the you're such an asshole like stop being assholes people please it's it's and it's a bad look really you talked about you talked about uh being in texas what made you in la decide to make texas your final spot to lay your hats down so he's from houston um houston area he's from the small right, Texas. Texas town, but yeah uh my hair doesn't really agree with um houston weather as monster i'm sure you can agree with um so it's it's a good happy medium for us to move to dallas because you get so much for your money i mean our house up north would be like stupid expensive compared to what we paid for it and um that and his agent and a lot of people that he trains with are down here um and his um he, he's familiar with the area for a couple different reasons and you know what it, it was good for me and it was healthy for me to kind of get away from some um unhealthy situations uh in michigan as far right. as just kind of cancerous people so um it, it was good for a fresh start and for us to build our life kind of down here and you know in our in our home home you're a Detroit lady, though. How are you going to feel when them six-foot spiders crawl through your window and you got to beat them away with a bat? 
They're Wait, it's be not here. the it's not the snow. What are you gonna well, do when you look out the window? There's no snow. <laughs> well, that's why we're in Buffalo, my friend. <laughs> oh, and you'll get the snow here. Snow's not <laughs> snow's not gonna bite her, and, and no, no, I worry about the spiders. Nah. You, sh you should understand that I'm not the one with the broom. My ass is out the door. I don't run, but I'm gonna <laughs> run then because that's yeah, not a chance. Nope. And it's th this is the one thing about my husband that pisses me off. He will not kill spiders for me. He's like, you do it. No, you do it. I, do. I, I, I got to be honest. I'm guilty of that too, but I kind of enjoy You're a pansy. You're a pansy. I, no, no, no. I let my, my yes, girlfriend, she's like, come kill it. I'm like, I'm not going to kill it. I'll let you suffer and then I'll kill it. But I'll take it outside usually. Oh, no. He won't even do that. And I, okay, again, I'm all for like. Tough love. I'm all. Yes, I am for tough love. But I'm all for, you know, let them live. Not, no, not spiders, though. Anything else, yes. Kill those fuckers. Like, they breathe. Like, and they don't, have, like, they don't have one baby. They have, like, 98 million in, like, a week. It's ridiculous enough. They have, do you know how many legs that is? 98 million times eight? That's a lot of legs. Carry to <laughs> seven. It's a ton. Hard pass. Hey, Freddie, you got any other questions for Miss Waddle? Oh, yeah. We had another question here from uh, Chef Bake One. He wanted to know, of the three teams that he's played for, who's had the biggest playbook? I don't know. It's it's all on an iPad. I mean, I don't, I don't know. It's My question would be, who cooks? You were L.A. Yeah, girl. That's that's my job, you know. You burn? You good at burning? Can you burn? <laughs> oh no, I'm a good cook. Ask my husband. Um, and I actually burn I, a uh, for good cook. That's up here in New York. Can you burn? It means can you cook? Oh, uh, I don't know. Doesn't mean do you burn your food? Oh, uh, <laughs> how am I supposed to know that? Thank you. I'm learning you. I'm giving you some uh, pointers. New York yeah. slang. Um. Well, I don't mean to brag, but your girl. Is sponsored by Velveeta, so. Uh, so the mac and cheese is on point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, and no. it's not—it's not like they pay me money; they just send me free cheese. <laughs> so that's wrong. Like, free cheese, way better. Way liquid better gold. Money. Liquid gold. That's right. Liquid uh, gold. It literally is. I like mac and cheese. <laughs> yeah. No. Well, I'll make you some. That's what I'm saying. Freeze it and ship it. Do you have anything else coming up, Ms. Waddle, before we let you go, as you've been ever so gracious with your time with us tonight? Is there anything else you want to talk about or touch on before we bid these great people adieu? I just want to say thank y'all, uh, not only to you guys for being so gracious and inviting me on here, um, but just thank you for the city of Buffalo and, you know, the, the Bills Mafia for inviting me into your family and for you know, being so gracious enough to, you know, welcome us into y'all's home. Um, it's, it's a very different experience than anything, not just when it comes to teams or football, but just in life um, to have people. So, you know, you, you get your bad apples, but to have a group of people be so kind is it really did change my life. And I know it sounds like I'm kissing y'all's ass, but y'all should know I, I don't kiss ass. Um, don't talk. Uh, and it's not to get too TMI, but I was going through a really rough time um, as far as, you know, I, I've been vocal about mental health and all that, but I was going through a really deep depression for a while due to, um, you know, my pain, things that I kind of go through as well as, you know, kind of everything going from, you know, essentially running a company to not having a job and, you know, being able to lift and work out six, seven days a week to not being able to do that at all and kind of having my pain and all that hit me all at once and then not have any family around whatsoever. Um, and so I kind of went through a rough patch for a while and to be, you know, stressed out about moving to a new city and a new team to only have y'all welcome not only my husband, but me, um, really, can y'all hear me? Yeah. Uh, yep. Okay. Uh, it really meant a lot. And I, I really will never be able to repay y'all for, um, you know, the graciousness and, um, 
it, it, it really meant a lot and it does mean a lot. So uh, I'm ready to get this thing started and whoop some ass this year and whoop some ass. You don't got to <laughs> ever worry about repaying Bill's Mafia once we accept okay. you, your family. But just remember, oh, remember your initiation into Bill's Mafia happens at a tailgate. Just remember. Oh. Well, I'm in, but like I said, I got the back of a really old person, so I ain't going to be going through no tables. No, they outlawed it. No, nah, we don't do that. Either. Oh, they did? Yeah, they yeah. outlawed it. The bastards. So I can't have nice things. That's what I'm That's saying. Right. I can't have nice things. But we no, still have good any final thoughts? Yeah, I just wanted to thank Mrs. Waddle for coming on with us, and uh, I wish your husband the best. Hope he Thank stays you. healthy this year. Um, and one thing I wanted to just mention to you that a lot of Bills players that have come to the Bill Buffalo in the past, they questioned why they were there. Um, most of them come back every year because they love the city of Buffalo. It grows on you. And I hope that happens with you and your husband. It already has. So Perfect. thank you all very much. I appreciate all it. All right. Mm -hmm. So from myself, from Fred Kilmartin, from Mrs. Waddle, make sure you follow the Cold Front Report all across social media. Get on Twitter. Follow Miss Waddle. She's very inspirational. She has great things to say. She's very uplifting for the female population, even the male population. Very positive. Make sure you follow her. Make sure you engage. Go follow the GoFundMe. Get on that. Help this guy get to where he needs to get for his children. Do it sucks. But if anybody can do it, Bill's Mafia can do it. If you need more information, go to Shelby's Twitter page. She'll give you the information on there. So from Black all of us. Please sponsor me. Please, really, Cheap please. plug. Cheap plug. So from all of us here at the cold front, Miss Waddle, we love you. Thank you for taking the time with us, and hopefully we'll catch up with you in the future. Appreciate it. Have a good night, man. Thank That's you. News, we're out of here. I just like the sound.